Hi, my name is Karina and welcome to the Karina Chronicles. Today I'm going to compare my book taste to Haley in Bookland, a very requested booktuber for this topic. So let's quickly start. So since I have been comparing my book taste to other booktubers, Haley has been requested several times by different commenters, different subscribers to me. But I always postponed it a bit because I really like her. It's one of the booktubers that actually got me into uh, booktube, making booktube myself. But she stopped reading books, which is uh, difficult for me to compare because I just use Goodreads to see which books we rated similarly and which books not so much. And I didn't really commit to so much time putting into it and reading all her reviews and then see if books were similar or not. So I tried to save up some books that she mentioned during her videos and just go off of that. But recently Haley hasn't been posting that much. And uh, when she posted, she didn't read that much, except for her last video, by the way. Uh, and therefore, when she read the books, they were also not similar to the books that I read. So I felt like I had no content when I was going into that. Uh, so I decided to just use Goodreads again and look at some books that we read um, less recently. So the books are maybe a little bit older <laughs> on the other, older side. Back in the time when Haley and Bookland was still giving ratings to her Goodreads reviews. Um, but furthermore, it's just as all the other comparisons. So if you don't know, I really like other booktubers and I want to support them. Not that they need my support, but I just want to show if you like a certain booktuber, if we have similar tastes or not. So for now it's Haley and Bookland. I wanted to put her into the picture. Because it's almost Bookmas, which is the whole month of December. Haley posts a video every day. So if you want to check out if Haley is something for you, a booktuber you want to watch, December is the perfect month. So I was like, let's put her in the spotlight now. Then you know where to go to in December if you really like it. But now, our taste in books. Let's quickly start with that. According to Goodreads, our taste in books is 76% comparable, which is not really high, but it's definitely not low. I do have to say that this is mostly because of a lot of popular YA slash children books we both read when we were younger. We are the same age, so we had the same youth uh, with books. <laughs> and I think we both uh, drove apart after that with our reading tastes. So I think that if we would compare our taste now, it would be less comparable. But it doesn't really matter because I still really love her content, even though we don't have comparable taste. But 76% is not really bad. And two of the books that are more recent that we share our opinion about are books that we both really liked. The first one I want to mention is Valiant by Leslie Livington. Livingston, sorry. And this book is about a female gladiator in ancient Rome that, well, she wants to rule the world, actually. <laughs> and she's doing pretty great at this school for women gladiators. And it is, how would you say it? It is more like an historical fiction, but why a fantasy made. And that is really awesome. She's, by the way, abducted. She doesn't really want to be a gladiator, but well, the moment she gets abducted and gets thrown into this uh, school, she wants to be the best. And she is very, very powerful. We both rated this four stars. And I can't believe I haven't picked up the sequel yet because I was so, so happy when I read this. I needed more female characters like her. I really liked her. And the historical fiction in Rome, it's also really something for me. So yeah, 
if it's also something for you, pick it up. Haley and I both love it. And maybe this is like a common thing because I know Haley loves historical fiction and I do as well. And it's no surprise that the other book is also in historical fiction, being The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. We also gave this book four stars, both of us. And this is also a historical fiction, but taking place in the 1800s, uh, the 18th century, so the 1700s. And we're following this guy named Monty, who is uh, the heir of a very, very, very rich family. And he doesn't really have a um, supporting family of his needs and wants. He just needs to be the perfect heir. heir. So he decides to do everything he's not allowed to do. He's being a pain in the ass. <laughs> but it's really enjoyable to follow. And he has this amazing crew of friends uh, with, with whom he goes on an adventure. It also has LGBTQ plus representation, people of color. And that is also something rare in historical fiction. So this one is a very nice for a change. I also need to read the sequel of this. It's less bad that I haven't read it yet because I just finished this book. But the second part is about his sister. And that's also a very strong independent woman that I want to read more about. And then two books that we both were not really a big fan of. And one of those is actually a book that we were both surprised about because everything in there sounded like something we should like, but we didn't. And that is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahowin. Maybe, maybe this also comes out of like historical fiction because um, this could have been historical fiction if it was more accurate. And maybe that's why we didn't like it because we're both fans of historical fiction. And this one is about witches, but witches are portrayed very weird. And obviously because it's actually a fantasy, the witches really are witches. <laughs> they use magic. The magic system is kind of interesting, but not really worked out very well. I didn't like the characters and I also really didn't like how the women were portrayed in this. And I know it's kind of how it was back then. Women didn't really have rights. And, mm, well, women weren't supposed to do things and weren't um, promoted or supported in doing anything. I know, but if you write a fantasy <laughs> that is not historically accurate, you can also change that up a bit. I don't want to read how women are being mistreated all the time when it's not pointed out in the book and it also doesn't really seem to be on purpose. <laughs> it just is the way she wrote it and really didn't like that. Am I going to read the sequel? Obviously, because I want to know how this ends and I also feel like I should have loved this. So maybe when I'm in an other mood that the sequel suddenly is like a big surprise to me. We both gave this two stars, by the way. It is not as bad as a one star rating. It is not the worst book ever, but it really didn't fulfill its potential. And we both didn't really enjoy our time. A book that we didn't rate exactly the same, but uh, our point of view is kind of the same, is uh, Levana by Marissa Meyer. I believe the English title is something like Fairest. Mm, fairest, yes. <laughs> and this is the story about the bad stepmom, the evil person in the whole Lunar Chronicles series. This is a novella in between part three and four. And um, I love the Lunar Chronicles. My channel is partly named after that. And I love the series. And this was just my least favorite. It wasn't really interesting. It didn't really add much to the story. Her story was weird, actually. And she didn't feel like a very believable bad guy. Which she, she did in the rest of the series. So seeing her background should have made that better instead of worse. 
And I gave it three stars because I still enjoyed it. And I love Marissa Meyer's writing, but three stars is really low compared to the rest of the series for me. And Haley had kind of the same because I gave all the books, almost, almost all the books five stars. And this one three. And Haley gave almost all the books four stars. I think Chris or, or Winter, she gave five. I don't really remember, but there's one book she gave five stars, but the rest four. And she gave this one two stars. So she feels the same. The series is really nice. Uh, and this one doesn't really add that much to the story. Which is a very much a shame. There's only one part left in the Lunar Chronicles that I need to read. It's also a novella and it's after the fourth book. So it's actually more like a, well, epilogue kind of thingy. It's short stories in the same universe. I hope it will be better than this one. Uh, I'm really sad to, <laughs> to name it on this list. But well, it is here because it was kind of a disappointment. So up to here, our tastes were quite comparable, but now we're getting to another genre, many more fantasy, romancy fantasy. I already knew that we are not comparable on that part because Haley also announced that she doesn't really like to read fantasy anymore. And I only grew to love the genre more. I like big chunky fantasies with very much in-depth politics and intriguing systems and everything. So I'm not surprised that for the fantasy that I'm going to name, they're all YA actually, because those are the fantasies Haley still reads. Uh, every time she thinks they're great, I'm like, no, this is so shallow. And every time I think they're great, she's like, no, they're so boring and long. So I understand. So I don't mind that we change, or that our opinions are different on this. But I still want to name a few so that you can see which taste is more to you liking. So to your liking. The first one is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I don't remember much about this book, even though I really liked it. I gave it four stars. And that is because it's just a very intriguing fantasy. You have this main character who doesn't know actually what he can do, but there is some magic. There's a, a lost city that they try to recover and a journey and some political intrigues and I don't really remember, but I do remember that the writing was really pretty and that I felt like I was on an adventure. And I think that is for me the most important thing in fantasy. But I can also understand that that might be boring for some people, as it was for Haley, who couldn't really get through this and gave it two stars. I love the, this kind of writing and that you just feel like you're in the story but afterwards if people ask you what did you like about it you don't even know i love those but i can understand that she didn't and one that is mm, a little bit of cheating well actually two books that i'm now going to mention are a little bit of cheating because i usually don't mention books that i haven't read since September 2018 because I haven't written a review about them. So if I like books a lot and I want to be able to talk about them on my channel, I reread them first so I can write an honest review on the book and then talk about it with more reasoned and more elaborate thoughts. And now I'm going to name two books that I didn't read since then. But I want to reread to see if I still think they're good. Because they're like you favorites, but they're probably bad. <laughs> so the first one of that is New Moon in the Twilight series by Stephanie Meyer. I rated the whole Twilight series three stars. But I have to admit, I think when I was younger, I enjoyed them far more than three stars. And three stars is just based upon how I now look back at them and think they would be, but I actually need to reread them and really find for myself. Um, Haley did the same and Haley rated all the Twilight books except for the first one, one star. So really, really bad. And I saw that and I really needed to laugh about that. I was like, okay, I need to reread this. 
and figure out myself if they're really that bad. <laughs> and the same thing holds for the book Beautiful Creatures, which I really can't remember anything about, but I gave it three stars and she gave it one. And I do want to reread that book and also compare it to the movie because I think the movie of that book was really bad, right? Or there was something with it. So need to reread these books to actually be able to say if I still like them. I can say this might not be the best way to show you what is my taste and what is hers. Strange the Dreamer I really loved. Twilight and Beautiful Creatures are books I could have loved. But I wanted to show you some books that I like more than Haley did and most of the books Haley liked more than I did. So those are the books we're going to talk about now. The last three books I want to talk about are books that I thought to be very bad <laughs> and Haley apparently liked and they are actually more recent so I'm really surprised that this is something she might like. The first one is a book I can't get over that people would actually like this. It's Obsidian by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I need to read two more books by her for a book club. And I've been really dreading it, putting it off. Because if you can write such a bad book, how can I... How can I be convinced that her other books are good? I don't know. This is a paranormal romance that doesn't help. That's my least favorite genre, but... Well, the only reason I gave this two stars instead of one is probably the cover because I'm in love with it. <laughs> I really like the cover, even though you already can see that this is a genre that is not for me. I just really like the blue. <laughs> and I don't know what she liked about it. I mean, maybe she thought it to be cheesy and like feel good or something, but it wasn't even that because... It didn't feel good like it's not like everything went fine and it was comedian or anything about it it was just a romance but it wasn't really steamy or smutty so i don't know what would be in this book that could make people like it but i am definitely uh, on the unpopular side with this and the other book oh she gave it four stars by the way so that's pretty high rating Another book that I'm definitely on the unpopular side is A Court of Thorns and Roses, which I gave three stars, which is fine. I mean, it's fine. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, so if you know that, you know how it will go. Uh, but then with some Sarah J. Maas sauce over it, which doesn't work for me because I don't like her writing. So is this a bad book? Probably not, but I was like, okay, it's fine. But if a first part in the series is three stars, that's usually not a, not a good sign because I tend to like the first part the most because that's when you dive into a new world. And uh, well, this world, maybe this will get better. I will read more of this series because I just want to know. And maybe it will get better because this was the retelling part. So you knew what was going to happen because it was still quite similar to Beauty and the Beast. But after this, it will be a different story. So maybe it will get better. Haley gave it five stars. Like this is really one of her favorite books. And I don't know if that would still be the case if she read it now, but I'm still surprised. How could you give this five stars? I know I'm in the unpopular side. Please roast me in the comments. It's fine. But five stars can help but feel very much surprised by that, to say the least. And then the last book is A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow, which is a very recent book. This book came out during the Black Lives Matter movement when it was on its peak. I hope that it's still going i hope the peak never really goes down but well you know what i mean when i say the peak when there were also a lot of protests riots and everything was happening and i really felt this book was like sped up and quickly published so it could lift on that or something because it is a person of color story fantasy story which had so much potential but missed editing and uh, 
good writing actually in my opinion it had so many good things it was so great it was like a fantasy mixed with all these characters you know from all mythologies uh, and then mixed with some um, talk about racism and teaching you things about how it feels and what it can do to people so this could have been a very important book but i honestly feel like it was rushed because the perfect moment to publish it when was, was when the whole world wanted to know more about racism in the world in the current modern world and I truly feel like that. I and when I am saying this now, I feel like a horrible person because that sounded too harsh. But I I do mean it. I do mean that this has so much potential and could be such an important story. And uh, it doesn't feel like a surprise that it was published immediately then. And I think it was rushed. I would have loved it more if it was more worked out and had some more editing rounds. Uh, Haley doesn't agree. She gave it four stars. I gave it two stars. And the two star was actually for all the potential it had. This could be like the hate you give, but then uh, in a fantasy world. And that is so important and so beautiful. And I was so excited. And this was just such a disappointing story because of the writing. Because they, uh, they suspected you to know all the mythological creatures, which not everyone knows of so it was very confusing and the racism also wasn't shown very well so yeah it is a pretty book it is but that's it <laughs> well ending on a high note uh, apparently so those were actually the books that i wanted to talk about books we have similar tastes in and books we definitely don't have similar taste in let me know down in the comments below which of us you agree most with because i'm very curious to hear please check out Haley's channel in december she will post videos every single day so that is really really impressive i won't so if you then like need videos you can watch her <laughs> i will post videos though and they are very interesting so keep an eye out for that I really hope you liked this video. You can check out the other comparison videos that I did. Please let me know which booktuber I should do next. I'm kind of through the booktubers that I really follow very closely. So <laughs> if you have a suggestion, please say so. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like. And if you subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell, you will be notified whenever I post a new video. I hope you have a lovely day filled with books and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye! I would definitely like to know a new booktuber to compare myself to because I'm kind of through my most watched booktubers. Let me know which one you would like to see. What is your taste comparable to?